أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to my Ramadan series, Understanding Quran with Nafisa. So we are looking at Surah Al-Nisa. And in my first episode, we looked at verse 1 to 4. Moving forward, we're going to move on quite swiftly. So without any further ado, let's jump straight into it. So we are on verse 5, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do not entrust the incapable among your dependents with your wealth, which Allah has made a means of support to you. But feed them and clothe them from it and speak to them kindly. Okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here, the amazing advice that he's giving us is we should trust, put our, our money under the hands of those whom we know and trust. And we know that they are good with money and that they can be sensible with money. Those are the people that we should allow to be our accountants, if you like, in terms of our wealth. Why? This is such wise advice Allah Akbar, that Allah is giving to us. Allah says, this is the means that I've given you to do what with? To support yourselves with. So the wealth that we have is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's giving it to us to support ourselves. When we decide to hand it over to irresponsible people, we ourselves are not being wise and we ourselves are not doing what? We're not following the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us. What is he does, but what does he say about those type of people? They are our dependents, meaning they are usually people that we care for. What should we do? We should feed them and we should clothe them from that income that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. We should still take care of them. Why? Because they are our dependents. If you don't know what we mean by a dependent, your dependent could be your children. Your dependent could be your elderly parents that you're looking after, right? Your dependents might even be other members of the family or of the community that you have assumed financial responsibility for. So whoever you are financially responsible for would be your dependents, especially as it relates to this, this topic. But, you know, as a mother, my children are my dependents, right? My husband is not my dependent. I am his dependent because he takes care of me <laughs> financially, right? So whoever your dependents are, Allah says, the incapable among your dependents, don't just go and trust your money with these people. You know that they are, for whatever reason, incapable. It may mean because they're mentally challenged, and that is not to insult anybody, but um, we don't, it's not wise to give your money to someone that you know is mentally challenged because sometimes they may make decisions that they themselves are not even be being held accountable for. Because in Islam, those with certain disabilities are not held accountable for their actions because it's not their fault. Right. It's not their fault. They, they don't have the capability to make certain reasons. Right. So you can't hold them accountable for it. It's, you have to hold yourself accountable for it. Right. It's like if a crazy person harms you and you just stand in their way and allow them to harm you, you have to take some accountability for that because, you know, they're not mentally stable. So for individuals who are not mentally stable and they are our dependents, Allah says, be kind to them. He doesn't say because they have these flaws and because they are your dependents that you should abuse them. He says, be kind to them, feed them, clothe them, meaning provide for them their, their needs, right? From the wealth that he has blessed you with. And you should speak to them kindly as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala particularly mentions that too. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to say, test the competence of the orphans until they reach a marriageable age. Then if you feel they are capable of sound judgment, return their wealth to them and do not consume it wastefully and hastily before they grow up to demand it. Then if the guardian is well off, they should not take compensation. But if the guardian is poor, let them take a reasonable provision. When you give orphans back their property, call in witnesses. And sufficient is Allah as a vigilant reckoner. Wow, so much wisdom here. So what is Allah saying here? He is saying that you should wait, check the, the sense of reasoning of the orphan to see if they are mature enough 
right? If they are mature enough and they can be responsible enough to now have their wealth under their own control. If not, wait until they reach the marriageable age, right? Because a marriageable age means that, okay, this individual is now mature enough to take care of responsibility. Marriage is all about responsibility. A person can be 40 years old, but still may not be ready for marriage because they cannot take or, you know, accept responsibility. So Allah is saying here when they are, of, when they reach marriageable age, then if you feel they are capable of sound judgment, they have to be capable of sound judgment. They can be marriageable age, right? Maybe they're, they're tall enough now. Maybe they're 25 and you're thinking you're ready to get married. But the way they reason is not sound. They cannot make sound judgment. Then they're not ready. But if they're able to make sound judgment and you have to fear Allah when it comes to this, not to use this as an excuse, not to give back to the orphan what belongs to them. We cannot do that because if we do that, Allah knows what is in our heart. We can pretend to others, but you cannot lie to Allah. But if you can see that they have reached this age where they can make sound judgment, then what are you to do? You are to return the orphan's wealth back to them, return their wealth back to them. This was something from your father, okay? Your mother left this behind, it's yours. Take it, right? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala conti continues to say that do not consume the orphan's wealth wastefully. Again, Allah is saying don't consume their wealth wastefully. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if the guardian is well off, if you as an individual taking care of the orphan, you are well off, you, there, there is enough for your needs to be met, then don't take anything from the wealth of the orphan. But if you're poor and you don't have anything, right, then you can take a reasonable provision. That's even if you need it, right? If you've been able to manage all this while and you're not starving, you really don't need to take anything from the orphan right? Because all of your needs are met. We're not talking about our wants. We're talking about our needs, right? If you're poor and you don't have your needs met, you can take something of provision from the orphan's wealth. But if you have enough, do not touch the orphan's wealth, right? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on to say that when you give the orphan back their property, make sure you have witnesses, you know, in Islam, whenever there's usually an agreement, Islam actually encourages you to put the agreement in writing. Did you know that? That between Muslims, when you make an agreement with your fellow brother, put it in writing and then do what? And then have witnesses. When you get married, you're supposed to have witnesses. It's not supposed to be the two of you that just goes and gets married somewhere. They're supposed to be people who should come and witness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasizes this thing in many different areas of the Quran, including in this verse here. Allah says, when you give them back their wealth, make sure there's a witness there. But above that witness, you should know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest of witnesses. So you can't cook up a story at some point to say, this is what they gave me. This is what they didn't give me. This is what I gave the orphan and the orphan's like, you didn't give me that. There should be a witness and the witness should be someone who fears Allah. But know that even if the witness wants to play games or if the orphan themselves want to play games or if the guardian wants to play games, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of witnesses and we cannot fool Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We may be able to trick people in this life, but on the day of judgment, Allah will surely bring out the truth and the truth will always be exposed. For men, there is a share in what their parents and close relatives leave. And for women, there is a share in what their parents and close relatives leave, whether it is little or much. These are obligatory shares. What are we talking about here? Inheritance. Allah is talking about inheritance. And Allah says, for men and women, they have to inherit something from what their relatives leave behind. Which means you can't say that when I die, my kids are not allowed to inherit from me. I've heard of stories of, I think it was Warren Buffett or whatever. Someone was uh, 
I think someone was um, retelling or re-explaining his book in brief. And they were talking about how he, he said that when he dies, his children are not going, going to be able to inherit anything from him. Um, so he's told all his kids already. And Warren Buffett, if you don't know him, is like one of the richest men on earth right now. Um, but in Islam, us Muslims, we don't, we don't do stuff like that. We don't do that. We earn halal income. And when we die, our relatives have to, they have to. Allah says it's what? These are obligatory shares. They're not optional. Your, your, your blood relative will have to inherit from you. How much they get differs. And I might put a thingy of the inheritance shares here for you to see. Okay, then Allah continues to say, if non-inheriting relatives or orphans or the needy are present at the time of the distribution, offer them a small provision from it and speak to them kindly. What is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showing us here? That orphans actually don't have a right to inheritance, right? But you can give them a gift. You can give them a gift. This gives me an opportunity to also say, children who are born out of wedlock in Islam are also not entitled. They are not entitled to inheritance. But from what I've read, they can be given gifts it cannot be called inheritance, but it can be called gifts from their parents. But children who are born out of wedlock do not have an automatic right towards inheritance. So what the parent probably should do, we should all have um, a will where we've stated how things are going to be shared. If we have any wealth, whether it's buildings that you have in Africa, whether it's land that you have back home, I don't know whether there's a house you have here. You should have a will. And in that will, if one of your children was born out of wedlock or maybe all of them, make sure you've divided according to Islam because you can give them gifts. It doesn't mean they can't inherit anything from their parents, but it's gift and not inheritance. And it is also the uh, similar ruling for the orphan. The orphan do not have a right to inheritance, but they do. You can give them a gift. Right. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even says here, even um, relatives. Right. Here, if non-inheriting, non-inheriting relatives, orphans or the needy are present at the time when the inheritance is being shared, give them something. Don't just gather them all around to come and witness the rest of you get all these massive shares and they get nothing. Don't do that. Give them something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, right? And speak to them kindly, right? Because a lot of the time you have people who have served you for many years and they may be around during that time where they're sharing. They should get something. Subhanallah, this was actually something that I didn't know, that during the time of sharing, the people around should get something. So I have some homework to do. Yes, for me and my family and in preparation, knowing that I will go to one day, you know, as we learn these lessons, um, sisters, brothers and sisters, it should be for us to say, how can I adjust my life to make sure that it's in line with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from me? That's really what a Muslim should always be doing. And we have to come to terms with the reality that we are going to die, <laughs> brothers and sisters. Not a, it's not a fancy topic. It's not a luxurious topic, but we're all going. We're all going. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, let the guardian be as concerned for the orphan as they would if they were to die and leave their own helpless children behind. Allahu Akbar. So let them be mindful of Allah and speak equitably. Equitably means you speak with justice. You, you are just. I think this verse really, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, treat the orphan as you would want somebody to treat your child if you died and you left your child behind. Allah says, treat the orphan that way. In the same way as you would hope that one day when you die, how would you want somebody else to treat your child? You treat the orphan that way. And this is such an amazing advice from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because at some point, 
if you're a woman and you don't have children, inshallah, you will have kids. And one day, you will die and leave your kids and they will become orphans. <sighs> so, you should always think about the orphan. Treat them how you would want somebody else to treat your child. Because when you're good to other people's children, I always say karma, it's like it's a rule of life. What you do comes back to you. It just takes time. Whilst it's going round and it hasn't reached you yet, you think you're gonna, you're not, it's not going to happen to you until it hits you. What you do always comes back. So if you're good to other people's children, if you're good to the orphans, one day when you're not here, Allah will send people into the lives of your children who will be good to your children. I was having this uh, similar conversation with my husband the other day and I, I was saying to him that, you know, sometimes we don't, the goodness that we do is not just for us. We think it's for us. And then one day we realize that we are benefiting from the blessings of other members of our family. So if my mom did something nice to somebody before, one day I may not know this person, but as soon as they hear that, oh, that's, that's her mother, they're going to be like, subhanAllah, that woman, your mother, she helped me so much during this time, I'm going to take care of you. I have to be there for you because your mom was always there for you, for me. I have to be there for you because your father, your uncle was a great man. He was always there for me. He helped me with so many of my issues. Here's a, a, some kindness for you. And so we end up being blessed because we were a blessing to others. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us that lesson in this verse. The next verse, indeed, those who unjustly consume orphans' wealth, in fact, consume nothing but fire into their bellies and they will be burnt in the blazing hell. Ooh, I'm sorry, but <laughs> that was deep. After all of that advice Allah's giving you, if you're not going to follow it, this is where you're going to land. With the orphans' wealth, Allah says, if... You're going to consume it, meaning if you're going to, you're going to use it, you're going to eat the wealth of the orphan unjustly, right? Then you should know that what you're eating is fire. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that that individual who wastes the wealth of the orphan is going to hell. They are going to the blazing fire. They are going to end up being burnt in the fire of hell. And that is the end of the place of an individual who wastes the wealth of the orphan.